Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good night, good night. The sport Marcel P. Black. Once again, check it back in. The third installment, the third edition of uh, In Search of the Black Messiah Deluxe Edition, Deconstruction, the third episode. Um, yeah, once again, I'm not about to go through all that. You see what it is. Let's get right to it because I got things to do today. Come on now. All right. So today's song, we're going to discuss God's Trombone, um, featuring D. Horton, produced by Jay Philly. Um, it is my favorite, one of my favorite songs on the album. Um, I feel like it is top five songs I've ever written in my whole career. Um, it means a lot to me as an artist, as an MC, as a vocalist, as a vocal performance. And just, you know, just me trying to get my content out, you know what I'm saying, like my art out. Like, I, I just feel like it's one of the best records I've ever done. It's really special to me. So let me tell you how I came up with it. So I went down on Facebook and I see Fairfield Central Trombone fair, Fanfare. Um, I think this is in either Virginia or the Carolina somewhere, but it's somewhere in the mid-Atlantic. And I click on it. Now, mind you, I used to play trombone in high school. I actually came to Southern to play trombone and it didn't work out. So even though I don't play anymore and I haven't played trombone, I haven't played trombone meaningly, meaningfully probably since I graduated high school. Um, you know, anytime I hear the horn or anytime, you know what I'm saying, uh, I see it, you know, I just I kind of get a glimmer in my eye because it was a huge part of my childhood. So anyways, I watched this video. Your chills, man. So that is, I think it is Al Jarreau's, uh Black and Blue or what have you that they did. But like, I, I relate to that. You know, look, I never was that good. I, you know, we didn't play in that type of like band. You know, so we played in a white type band. So we never got to play with that much. So we, I never did a trombone fanfare. I never did a trombone solo, right? But the reason why that song resonates, that that trombone solo and that fanfare resonates to me because it reminds me of. Um, just that feeling as an MC, man. It's like it's like you get on stage and it's like you're looking at yourself perform. It's like the spirit hits you that you just go for. You don't even you don't even think about the words. You don't think about your movements. You don't think about your breath control. The spirit just moves you. You know what I'm saying? And I just feel like the Lord was, you know what I'm saying, just kind of speaking to the ball at horn. You know what I'm saying? Like he'll probably never have a performance like that again in his life, like that specifically. Like you can't practice that. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't choreograph that. You know what I'm saying? Um, he 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 just went there, you know what I'm saying, and it spoke through him. So like I, I've never felt that way as an MC. So I remember seeing that, and I sent this to I sent this video to Mad Producers. I wanted Fifth Child to do it, but it was a couple other producers, and they you know they just I don't know if they weren't fooling with it. They just see the vision or what have you. 
And I was like, man, it's a buddy playing guys from bone. And that's what I said to myself, you know what I'm saying? And I might have said it on the Facebook post. So to your left, you see another part of my childhood. Um, you know what I'm saying? God's trombone. It's uh, seven Negro sermons in verse. I kind of like speeches or, or uh, uh, parables or what have you uh, written by James Wilder Johnson, who was an author, a playwright, just an activist, you know what I'm saying, during the Harlem Renaissance. He was just really, really dope dude or what have you. God's trombone means a lot to me because when I was in middle school, I was with the Fox. I was in the class called Pro Team, and I used to go to speech and debate classes, uh, a, a contest, and, and, and you know, or a talk contest or whatever. That's how I know how to speak in front of people. That's why, you know, I, I'm not really afraid, you know, so I don't really have stage fright or what have you. Um, one of the pieces that she taught me was a piece called uh, 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 Prodigal Son. Young man, young man, your arms are too short to box with God. It is based upon the Prodigal Son from the Bible. And so, you know, that was my first introduction to James Wilder Johnson and God's trombone or what have you. So one day, um, I am going through my email, going through my Gmail or what have you, and I sent a message, an email from Jay Philly, you know what I'm saying, one of my go-to in-house producers. I met him at Langston in 2003, and we just we stayed cool. He produced my first big record for me, and we've done several projects together. So he always sends me beats. He sends me something called Trombone Shorty. I knew exactly what it was when I saw it. No questions asked. I knew exactly what it was when I saw it. It was lit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew what it was, and the verse came to me super duper duper quick, oh, have you. And uh, the first verse, rather. And I wanted to, uh, you know, one of the main themes of In Search of the Black Messiah is, uh, you know, I say, you know, I, I, I name uh, a lot of the different things that I feel that COINTEL Pro or the government or whatever you want to say, I say one of the many, you know, one of the many things that they've used against African people in America, you know what I'm saying, to hold us back. And I think religion is one. And when I say religion, I'm talking about plantation Jesus, slave master Jesus, I'm talking about the Christianity that was gave, given to us with the whitewash, blue-eyed, blonde-haired Jesus, you know what I'm saying, um, and how that has affected African people on this continent and worldwide. What have you. So um, I remember, like, just kind of being on Facebook, you know, being that I'm a conscious rapper, I have... Uh, black hip hop fans and just crew from all over different spectrums of, you know, spirituality or what have you. And atheists, Muslims, five percenters, whatever, whatever, whatever. And mostly when they talk about religion, they talk about Christianity. And the reason why they don't trust Christianity is because of what Europeans did to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so um, that just really stuck out to me. That, that concept that kind of stuck out to me. So um, God's trombone and a lot of the album is reimagining uh, 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 the best I can as, as a black American, um, what God looks like without white supremacy, without westernized European influence or what have you. So um, that, that's, that, that's what uh, 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 God's trombone is about. And uh, I was able to get my man D Horton on the track. And we'll I'll talk about that in a second. I, you know, it's it's Monday right now, so I couldn't able to, I wasn't able to get him on, but uh, yeah. So this is a uh, guy's trombone, and I'm gonna be stopping and going and breaking this down so we can kind of talk about you know the song or what have you. So this guy's trombone by Jay Philly, produced by Jay Philly. And Jay Edgar Hoover's Quantel Pro organization. He had a couple of bullet points I want to talk about. He said preventing the rise of a black messiah is important. Cause this person could unify and electrify the militant black nationalist movement. Last but not least, J. Edgar Hoover said a final goal should be to prevent the long range growth of militant black organization, especially amongst youth. We have to try to find the next black messiah. Let's go. So I'm going to stop right there. I mean, the whole COINTEL Pro, Pro piece, you know what I'm saying, by J. Edgar Hoover, you know, prevent the rise of a black messiah. This is what this comes from. That's verbatim what he said. That's where this comes from. 
or what have you. And um, one of the ways I feel that they've tried to permit the rise of the Black Messiah is uh, take our religion, take our spirituality and brainwash us with European version of Christianity. So I'm gonna play that again. I'm gonna play that again. In J. Edgar Hoover's Quantel Pro organization, he had a couple of bullet points I want to talk about. He said, preventing the rise of a black messiah is important. Because this person could unify and electrify the militant black nationalist movement, last but not least. J. Edgar Hoover said a final goal should be to prevent the long-range growth of militant black organization, especially amongst youth. We have to try to find the next black messiah. Let's go. A lot of people ask me why I do it. Why I'm always talking about some revolution If I ain't rap so black, I'll probably sell my music But I'm never dumb it down, cause nigga, I ain't stupid I'm Yeah, I have no idea how many times I've heard that When I first started out um, Just people telling me nobody wanted to hear that kind of stuff You know, we in the South, you're in bad rules Nobody wants to hear that uh, You know, you should dumb it down, you should do this, that, and the third I can't, this is who I am, this is what I do Like, I don't make music for money you know what I'm saying? I do business. I conduct business as an entrepreneur for money, but I make art because I have something to say. Like I told you, I'm a son of a gospel singer. And so making music uh, that speaks to me from a spiritual standpoint, from a personal standpoint, expressing myself is always going to be uh, uh, the goal, no matter what I'm trying to accomplish. What happened. So, yeah, just wanted to say that off, off the flap. Let's go. You rap a stunt, puff on blunts, over pull up fronts while I'm out in the struggle with the youngest. Try to build them up, trying to interrupt the interruption, may they kill us. If it ain't the bravest cages filled with us, that they fill it up. I made my choice to cut through all this noise as a voice for reason. Dedicate my life up on this mic to always speak for freedom. Every single time I write a verse, is to serve my people. Out you in the dirt where we're hurt, trying to fight the I, I always say, um, you know, people always talk about me doing conscious rap. It's like, look, so, so many people do, you know, club songs, street records, uh, you know what I'm saying? They do songs, whatever, mainstream songs trying to cross over, and nobody's like nobody like really questions them on doing those records. They ask me why come I'm always talking about conscious hip hop because that's who I am. And I feel like I'm making up for all the content that a lot of rappers don't do. So I'm trying my hardest to tip the scales and try to bring some balance back to the content. I like the street stuff too, but like, you know, the world doesn't need another street rapper, another gangster rapper, another coke rapper, another strip club rapper, right? The world needs more pro-black, pan-African conscious rappers. So, you know, um, yeah. So I, I just think it's important to make that type of distinction. Uh, that's the reason why I made this type of music. Flex for fortune and fame. I'm just here to do the work. Cause somewhere there's a black messiah poster on the turf. So I'm trying to change conditions so the next one can emerge and lead us to the other side as Babylon burns. That's always been my thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh my my past, my background, um, youth development work, my art has always been trying to change conditions to empower young people. You know what I'm saying? So it don't matter if I'm being a mental health counselor or if I'm being a hip hop educator or if I'm being a conscious rapper, or if I'm being a community organizer, whatever. Like I come from a long line of people who worked in the community focusing on children. So that is what I do. So it's, it's only natural that this is what I do as an artist. I'ma let these horns blow Like I'm trying to knock down the walls of Jericho Keep on marching while we sing in freedom songs I am James Wilder Johnson playing God's trombone I'ma let these horns blow I'ma let these horns blow Keep on marching while we sing in freedom songs I am James Wilder Johnson playing God's trombone So, I'm very aware that uh, uh, when they marched around Jericho, they played trumpets. They didn't play trombones. I'm very aware of that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it just it just sounded good. You know what I'm saying? Just 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 bringing guys trombone together and talking about marching around the walls of Jericho. 
playing trumpets. Josh was blowing his horn, he was playing the trumpet or whatever, you know, but bringing that to God's trombone is just whatever. Using Basically using your God-given talent and gifts as an instrument, you know what I'm saying, to bring down what's holding back people, you know what I'm saying, as we fight on this spiritual journey. So this next verse is incredible, incredible verse by D. Horton. And once I'm going to let the whole verse play, and then I'm going to break down, you know, as best as I can because he's not here to do it himself. And two by two, they'll walk up and down the golden street, feasting on the milk and honey, singing new songs of Zion, chattering with the angels all around the great white throne. Listening to God's trombone. Word. Lord of mercy, Lord, I'm working. On discernment, no deference, no deterrence. I'm so determined, my motor burning, but I'm more concerned with global learning. Overturning, deep go returning, see souls are burning, but you're over earning. So I keep on marching like a soldier current. Every thought to reject with my soul be yearning. Put sweat for the set, what's so disturbing is I get my respect for the dough I'm earning. What's a dollar to a bank? Lead you to the water, make you drink. Wisdom in my lyrics make you think. Feel it in your spirit, let it sink. I be on the horn with some real street leaders. I be trying to politic with the rank. Disciples with sight on the skate. Real players with some paper in the safe. Cousins with love in like 12 different states. Blood relatives who did more than relate on God. We on the horn trying to hash our concerns. Marching on until Babylon burns. D. Horton. So D. Horton is one of my favorite rappers. And I'm going to tell you why. He's one of my favorite rappers for one because he says I'm the best rapper alive. And I love it. I don't want to be around nobody who ain't got no confidence in themselves. I don't want to be around nobody who don't believe in themselves. I want to be around artists who, and listen to artists who think they are the best. They try to be the best and they work out being the best. So that is why I tell him he's one of my favorite rappers, period. Period. Out of all my peers, I love that about him. Um, he's a he, He's the son of a pastor. He's a church kid just like I am. So when I was doing this record, it was only right that I, I sent it to him. You know what I'm saying? Um, the funny thing about it is, I saw I sent him the first verse. I just I didn't have the second verse done yet, and he hadn't heard the rest of the album. And when I say his album fit, his verse fit so perfectly. Oh my god! Like with the rest of the album. Uh, first of all, he starts off. I'm not sure what scripture that is, but he found the guy's trombone scripture and read the scripture for the first four bars. Right which is amazing. And like, you know, he, of course he gets the Andre 3000 um, 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 uh, comparisons, but man, like that was just, just as an artist, bro, like for him to put that on there, it just blew me away the first time I heard it. Like I was might've been running it, you know, I might've been driving it almost like drove off the road. I was so excited when he sent it back to me. And then he just kind of gets into it, Lord of mercy. Like, and then when he, when he picks up the flow, starts going double time or what have you, um, like when he gets, when he says, uh, uh, I'll be on the horn trying to talk to the people of the rank, talk about disciples, talk about the gangs of disciples, uh, talk about cousins, and you talk about crips, you talk about blood relatives, talking about bloods, and like it's it fits so perfectly within the theme of the album in terms of like, okay, we're trying to go back and and and, and, and organize gang dudes, dudes in the streets, in, in in order for us to like tear down these walls of Jericho. You know what I'm saying? Like it, 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 I mean, it, 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 it goes into conscious raffle game members later and a whole lot of different themes, you know, so even black liberation theology. So man, this verse is incredible. I wish I had him here to break it down, might have to do like a, a, a deconstructed remix or what have you, so he could talk about it himself. But this verse is incredible, I man, he got off. Like his flow was crazy, the content was crazy. And um, like I said, I couldn't, we couldn't, like it was perfect. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. He totally uh, exceeded my expectations of what he was going to do with it. And we definitely got to do more work together. We got to do a whole, like, you know what I'm saying, like, like church kids EP or something. Well, we, you know, well, we just kind of talk about those experiences or whatever. But yeah, all right, cool. Let me get back to the rest of the record. I'm going to let these horns blow like I'm trying to knock down the walls of Jericho. Keep on marching while we sing in freedom songs. I am James Wilder Johnson playing God's trombone. I'ma let these horns blow. I'ma let these horns blow. Keep on marching while we sing in freedom songs. I am James Wilder Johnson playing God's trombone. It's time to take it to another level. Why you niggas busy rhyming about your diamond bezel? These devils out you using God as a weapon. They think that they are hurting, justifies our oppression. Ain't 
no black hair bending teachers from plantation Jesus Cause they don't see us as equal and never wanted freedom For black people spitting lies when they tell us If we bow to them on earth, that will make it up to heaven But I don't want no way to perish, for I finally inherit The earth is God promised, I don't claim to be a prophet But I follow like apostles, a disciple with a rifle Ethiopian Bible up in blinkers on you false idols Thank God for the black woman Cause my God is a black woman And I'm a praiser with these horns that I be playing Jigga laid on the battlefield like I'm David Alright, I got distracted so I'm just gonna run this whole verse Time to take you to another level While you niggas busy rhyming about your diamond bezel These devils out here using God as a weapon they think that they are hurt. It justifies our oppression. These devils out here using God as a weapon. Um, white supremacists, white imperialists, Europeans, colonizers, um, they definitely use God. They use, the, the thing about Christianity is crazy. That, that That's wild is, it is used against the people who created the spiritual system to oppress them. So African people, our Kebulonian people, you know what I'm saying, created what is now known as Christianity. The first Christian churches is in Ethiopia or what have you. Um, like th this is a, a, a spiritual system created by African people on the continent of Africa, El Kebulon or what have you. Um, European people took it, remixed it and gave it back to us and they, they they put all their white supremacy in it to uh to enslave African people and, it's, and and use it as a way to colonize other people, other dark skinned and melanated people. You know what I'm saying? If if Europeans actually um you know took all the whiteness out of it, you know, would just kind of get over themselves, they would see that they are. Uh, for all intents and purposes, practicing a black spiritual system, and they and, and, and they are judgmental and prejudiced and racist against. Like if they were to see the people who actually created it, they would try to enslave them, and, and, and that's what they did, right? So that that's just that's just crazy. That just that it, it just it just drives me crazy what happened. And so I say, they're using God as a weapon. They think that they are her. It justifies our oppression. So um, when I was in college, I read a book by Brother Naim Akbar, The Eurocentric God Complex. And, you know, I mean, uh, it's called, uh, you know, Breaking the Chain of Psychological Slavery. And there was a chapter called The Eurocentric God Complex. And basically saying that, like, white people have this level of superiority. They have this feeling of superiority over African people because they think that they are God. They think that they are God and black people will always be um, in a subjugated inferior position until we stop looking at white people, their skin, you know what I'm saying? That they're God as well. So that's why it's so important. You know, Marcus Garvey said black people need a black God, right? So, you know, be it, you know, Nation of Islam, Allah, be it Moorish, be it 5% or be it whatever, I'm all for black liberation theology. I'm all for uh, black spiritual systems, you know, for me, I'm still a Christian, um, 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 you know, a very radical, a liberal Christian, black, you know, a, a follower of James Cone, follower of Albert Please, Jeremiah, writing things in that nature, what have you, because I look at Jesus as Yeshua being yourself, not the dude who looked like Zach Morris with long hair. You know, so what black Zach Morris that's on blackish right now. You know what I'm saying? Not Mark Paul Gossel or what have you. Um, and, you know, but with that said, you know, I think God is a woman. I'm not convinced that God is not a woman. You know what I'm saying? So when I say they think that they are her, it justifies our oppression. And then I say, ain't no black teaching. Ain't no black, ain't no plantation teaching the, wait, I'm messing up my words. Hold up. Ain't no, ain't no teaching of freedom within plantation Jesus because they don't see us as equal and never wanted freedom for black people spitting lies when they tell us that we bow to them on earth, then we'll make it up to heaven. 
but I don't want to wait to perish till the day that I inherit. The earth is God promised. I don't claim to be a prophet. But I follow like apostles, the disciple with a rifle, Ethiopian Bible up in blickers on you false idols. And thank God for the black woman, because my God is a black woman. And I'm appraising with these verses I be singing, jiggling on the battlefield like I'm King David. You know what I'm saying? They said David, he just got so he just got so hype. You know what I'm saying? He would dance out of his clothes. He was getting, he was lit. He was uh, uh, taking his shirt off. How many times you got drunk in the club, got the jig and got the dance, and you took your shirt off or whatever. And you know, so so we dancing like King David, you know what I'm saying, on the battlefield after the walls of Jericho was tumbled down or what have you. But yeah, that's a lot. Digest is powerful. It's not too many times where I feel like you've heard like like. Uh, Christianity broken down from a Christian standpoint. That's not anti-Christian or what have you. Um, I, I just think I think I think it's an important conversation, and it's something that I'm really proud to um, add to the legacy and culture of this type of resistant hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna play the rest of the song, let it play out. I, I'ma let these horns blow like I'm trying to knock down the walls of Jericho. Keep on marching while we sing in freedom songs. I am James Wilton Johnson playing God's trombone. Oh, oh, I'ma let these horns blow. I'ma let these horns blow. Keep on marching while we sing in freedom songs. I am James Wilton Johnson playing God's trombone. One day. I'm going to take time to learn how to really edit these videos. Um, until then, <laughs> this is how we rock. All right, we got to pay some bills. And J. Edgar Hoover's Quantel Pro organization, he had a couple of bullet points I want to talk about. I talk about not editing, did I mess up soon and short thereafter? All right, got to pay some bills. MarcelPBlack.com. Marcel P. Black on Instagram and Twitter. Facebook, Marcel P. Black. I got the merchandise, man. As you see, hoodies, tees, CDs, cassettes, masks coming soon. Marcel P. Black. Bandcamp.com. Let me go there just in case. Boom. Right here. Right here. Right here. Cop that thing, man. I really love the music. It's really dope. We keep talking about it, y'all. Cassette, CDs, T's. Got the mask coming soon. We got all type of different merchandise. I think it's like 20. Oh, that's no longer for sale. But yeah, y'all support, man. Y'all support, y'all get it. I'm going to be back next week talking about Black Guy Fresh. I will try to do my part to get Big Sign on here. Or what have you. If I don't get big sign, I'm gonna get backpack beats. I gotta get big sign, man. That that just needs to happen, anyways. But yeah, um, in search of the black Messiah deluxe edition. This has been the deconstructed, um, you know what I'm saying, conversation. I uh, see y'all next Monday. Uh, this night, you know, it's gonna be a seven o'clock. You know what I mean? From now on, it's gonna be a seven o'clock. I don't it should have been a seven o'clock because seven is the God hour. Allah Mahabe freedom.